Keno Sagana Marua Highway System will be one of the most important pieces of transportation infrastructure in Kenya. It has been a single carriageway for decades. But now it's being turned into a dual carriageway to serve a vast hinterland as the main trunk road from the capital city. The expanded road will have a high potential for economic growth due to the agricultural productivity and its hinterland that comprises the counties of Moranga, Embu, Meru, Kirinyaga, Isiolo, Nyeri and Patli, Machakos. The dwelling of the Kano Marua Road is one of President Uhuru Kenyatta's legacy project as he comes to the end of his second and final term and that is why he's taking it seriously. I've been driving on Tika Highway from the Kenyan capital city, Nairobi, to Kennel Town in Moranga County. Now, the beginning of this fast-growing town marks the very end of the dual carriageway, but construction is underway to make the dual carriageway continue 84 kilometers deep into central Kenya the new end of the carriageway or the dual carriageway will be Marua town. July 2020, the plan for the construction of the highway was ready. A team of surveyors architects and engineers had completed the initial plan. On the ground, the surveying team mapped the land where the highway would be built. In the map, they had data about soil properties drainage capabilities, future development potential, environmental effects, and the terrain. The government wanted a quality road constructed at high speed. And so the construction of the 16.7 billion project began. First, a wide area was cleared off all the vegetation. Then, in the strips where the tracks were being projected, the topsoil was removed until a solid base was found. But before that, engineers had the challenge of finding the best traffic routes for traffic to flow through towns, forests, rivers, and across regions.
the above activities will lead to land acquisition, physical displacement of people, loss of shelter, loss of assets, loss of income sources and livelihoods, and restriction of access to economic resources. Kwa sasa wale ambao wanapita upande wa kulia hapo sasa ninapata tatizo manake kuvuka barabara wapelekea miche itakuwa tatizo kidogo kama wanaweza niwekea kivukisho hapa hivi niwekee kama footbridge itakuwa rahisi sana manake wale wakisimama huko wanaweza pita juu waje wanunue miti ama wale ni wapelekee so nitaomba sana wale ambao wanansikia serikali ama wale ambao wanashughulika na hii barabara wakiniwekea kivukisho nitafurahi sana the government had to ensure displaced people are adequately compensated. As embankments were being built, hills were being cut down to flatten out the terrain where the road will be constructed. Well, some areas between Keno and Marua have limited space to accommodate the construction of the dual carriage. And so the first responsibility and duty for the engineer is to create space. And that comes with excavation. Then the old road had to be ripped off to create a highway system that will allow people to drive through the Mount Kenya region at high speed. Then soil and dirt was graded by bulldozers and other heavy machines to level out and smoothen the terrain together. A subgrade was then created. The compaction of layers gave the road its structure and strength. The dual carriageway is not just a road for today, but it will serve generations to come and hence durability is key. Several layers of soil and natural material were added. And then a 150 millimeter layer of cement or in some parts lime improved gravel was laid to form the road's sub base. It is on this sub base that the roadway is being laid. The Keno Marua Highway is being constructed in a hilly terrain that receives lots of rain. And so engineers must ensure proper road drainage is done. The whole essence is to ensure that the Keno Marua Highway does not flood during heavy rains. With that done, it was time to start paving. For this road, asphalt was the choice. Bitumen, a byproduct of petroleum, is being used to glue together crushed rocks. The mixture is then heated at over 120 degrees Celsius. Then it's transported to the construction site and laid to make the roadway surface. Along the highway, paving is being done at different locations, 
engineers are using asphalt pavers. Now, prior to placing the hot mix, these builders must apply tuck, which bonds layers of asphalt together. A clean surface is imperative and must be blown before application of tack. It is usually an emulsion and must break before laying the asphalt. As this happens, other teams are building new bridges the biggest being the Sagana Tana River Bridge. It is where the road crosses Kenya's longest river. River Tana that rises from the Abadeh Ranges and Mount Kenya. Indeed, the existing alignment passes over large and medium-sized river crossings like Muri Kakuz River, Sabasaba River, Morangu Kirwara River, Ruamudambi River, Ragati and Hohe Rivers, which are currently being crossed using concrete bridges or culverts. Well, this is one place where the bridge is under construction and as you can see behind me, there is the old columns and there is the new column. Uh, if I can see it or if I can turn it like this, now I can see the difference. There, there are three old columns there and then there is one new column. Well, these bridges are being constructed using both steel and concrete. The whole essence is to ensure that these crossings are able to withstand both tension and compression loads. Well, the first process is to ensure that columns are made. It is upon which beams or concrete beams are placed. On top of the concrete beams, the deck slab is laid and then the roadway. As the truck loaded with a mixture of bitumen and crushed rocks arrives, the dump man directs it into position. Then part of it is transferred to the hooper. Which must be two thirds full at all times. As the mix enters the hooper, it is conveyed to the ogres. The amount carried to the ogre chamber is regulated by the flow gates, which strike off the mix. It is then distributed to the front of the screed. These workers here ensure a constant head of material is kept in front of the screed. It is the screed that takes the head of the material and maintains the correct thickness as the material creates the mud.
and is then compacted to establish a rolling pattern. This is to ensure appropriate density is achieved. The rolling pattern determines the number of passes the roller will make behind the paver. Following the large single drum roller is the traffic roller. It is the finishing roller that adds the last little bit of compaction to achieve density. As paving enters home stretch, the construction of several bridges are picking momentum. The most challenging is the Upper Tana River Bridge. First, the river has to be diverted for piling and construction of columns. It is where this drilling rig comes in. The construction of the bridge has to be done without cutting the current traffic flow. As drilling goes on, a concrete drainage system must be built. The river passes through a valley and it can get messy during heavy rains. To ensure the highway does not flood during rainy seasons, the drainage must be done well. And a proper concrete formula must be chosen to ensure the concrete walls do not collapse during immense pressure from running water. One of the key highlights of the dwelling of the Keno Marua Road has been the construction of this bridge along River Tana. They get it wrong and the whole project slows down. The dual carriageway will be two roads in each direction, physically divided by a median non-road barrier. My name is Enoxicolia and I am the Kenyan historian.